Hello and welcome to this last exercise in module 11. So this is going to be another test on two population variances and as you can see I've stolen another problem from a previous module. Here we're looking at a problem from uh, exercise 10 to B. So if you recall module 10 this was a section where we looked at doing hypothesis tests on a difference in means. When we perform a t-test for a difference in means, we needed to concern ourselves with the degrees of freedom. When we were calculating the degrees of freedom, there were two ways of doing it. One was that big ugly formula with all of these things squared. I don't remember all the details. Remember, it was a big ugly one. And that formula was only necessary if we had reason to believe that those two population variances were unequal. If the variances were equal, then degrees of freedom would have been simply n1 plus n2 minus 2. So in this exercise, we don't need to go through the whole thing. If you recall, we're, we're looking at different heights of students by continent. And so here I have 83 students who have a European students have an average height of 71 inches and that's their standard deviation and here's the information for the North American students. What we want to to do in this exercise is to determine whether or not the assumption of unequal variances was appropriate. So if you go back and watch exercise uh, 10.2b you'll see that we assumed unequal variance and so we calculated our degrees of freedom using this big formula. Now we're going to test to see whether or not that was really necessary to do. So I just want to do a simple two-tailed test. I want to determine do I have evidence to show that yes these two variances are equal in which case the degrees of, formula, uh, degrees of freedom formula would just be n1 plus n2 minus 2 or were we correct in our assumption that they are unequal variants Oops. and so therefore we were correct in using that big ugly formula to calculate the degrees of freedom okay so now I'll just set this up we need our F test so our F statistic remember this is just the ratio of those two sample variances always always formulated with the larger sample variance in the numerator to ensure that our test statistic lies on the upper side of the distribution. This requirement is only necessary when we're doing these exercises by hand and are using these F distribution tables. This is only a result of the inadequacies or the, the inability of these distribution tables to cover all possible variants of the F distribution. So here I look at our data. The Europeans have the larger standard deviation. So this becomes population one and this is going to be my population two. So when I calculate the F statistic, this is going to be 6.2 squared divided by 4.7 squared because these are just standard deviations. So they have to be squared. And this gives us a test statistic of, let's get that calculator, 6.2 squared divided by 4.7 squared equals 1.74. So there's our test statistic for this particular exercise. Now let's go ahead and find our critical value for this. So our critical value, we have, let's see, 82 uh, so n1 minus 1 degrees of freedom here, this will be 82 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 2 minus 1, 108 degrees of freedom in the denominator. So I'll write this as 82 and 108 and we'll perform this test at the 05 level of significance. So alpha divided by 2 is 0 0.025. So there's 0 0.025 now let's go find this critical value. We go to our tables, our F tables, and this is might be a little bit tricky to find this one. Let's see, we have 108 degrees of freedom in the denominator. So I'm, I'm gonna actually move this table a bit. 
108 degrees of freedom and the denominator, so we have to come way down here. That's the closest we can get is to 100. In our numerator, we have 108 degrees of freedom. In our numerator, oh, did I get that wrong? Let's try again. Denominator is 80, my mistake. Denominator is 80 degrees of freedom. So here we have 80 degrees of freedom in the denominator. Now way over here is our 100, way up in that corner. Now I'm gonna have to move my my picture here because you're not gonna be able to see. Let's go top left. No, let's go top. Uh, right up there we go. So now if we bring these two together, come over here and down from here, here are my four values of interest. Those are my four critical values. Now my probability, my alpha divided by two, there's 0.025. So that means my critical value is right over here, 1.527. So coming back to our problem, I have a critical value of 1.527. So keep in mind what this means. There's that distribution, something like this. I don't know really what it actually looks like. We have our critical value is 1.527, and that defines our rejection space. Our test statistic, we calculated it as 1.74, so it's somewhere out here. Oh, I meant to change colors for that. So we have 1.74 is out here. So that is in that rejection space. So we can comfortably reject that null hypothesis and say, yes, we were correct in assuming unequal variance because our evidence supports the statement that those variances are not equal. Let's see if we can get a, an approximate p-value for this. It's getting messy. We're working right at the limits of our screen here. So we're looking for our test statistic. Let me refresh my memory what that is. Our test statistic is 1.74. So if we come to our tables and we're looking, oh, I lost it, way down here. 1.74, well, that's just right at the end of that list. It's larger than the largest value. So if our test statistic is larger than the largest critical value, then our probability is going to be smaller than the smallest. The smallest value here is 0 0.01. So our smallest value whoops, is 0 0.01. Our p-value for this two-tailed test, remember this is a two-tailed test, so our p-value is going to be something less than two times that smallest value. So it'll be less than 0.02. So again, if I come back to our distribution, our test statistic was larger than the largest. So the probability of interest is smaller than the smallest, and the smallest there was 0 0.01. Two times that is 0 0.02. And so our p-value is therefore less than 0 0.02, which is less than our level of significance, which confirms that we reject that null hypothesis. Okay, good, that's it for module 11. Hopefully that all helped, hopefully that all made some sense. We are going to be using this F distribution in later modules, so I hope that it is becoming easier to use. The challenge is really in using those F tables, but with practice we'll get the hang of it. Okay, thank you so much for watching, bye-bye.